What's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Hey, well, I've got you here. Please hit that like button, and I hope today is the day that I earn your subscription. Now let's get started. For any control panel that you're going to make for your RK one-ups, you want to start with the basic outline. It's usually 11 by 19 inches, and then you pick your layout. In this case, we're going with a, uh, a two-button configuration. You just need to jump in the action buttons. I'm using a Forstner bit to drill through to make nice, clean holes all the way through. Another thing, if you're going to reuse your stock buttons, is you have to remember this notch on the side that sort of indexes uh, the buttons. I'm using a uh, router to create that notch so that it's uh, continuous all the way through. A drill bit just really isn't going to give you the, uh, the results that you're after. And since I'm doing these by hand, I have to be very careful not to go too deep into the panel or else that notch will show around the button. There's actually a few where I made that mistake, but it's not the end of the world. All right, now we're going to locate the center for the volume and on-off buttons. This is going to be a tough one to do because uh, I really had to do this freehand. So I started with a hole marked dead center of each one, and then I take the bezel here, and then I'm going to outline the outside of it because what we're going to have to do is actually route some depth, take some depth out of this half-inch MDF so that all this uh, will be recessed uh, down into that uh, into the panel. So that's what I'm doing here. I have the basic outline and then I'm just doing this by freehand, taking my time not to do too much, not to get too aggressive, flipping it over to clear out the dust and keep going. The depth is set uh, based on a measurement I took from a stock panel. And you see, if you take your time, it fits. So if you want to perfectly match those rounded corners on your stock uh, control panel, you're going to want to get one of these guides. Got these, I actually got a set of these on Amazon. These are uh, the router guides. They're really, uh, really make this a lot easier. They sort of lock into place. And uh, the results are, are pretty good. Much better than trying to do that freehand, for sure. All right, now it's time to cut the slot with the slot cutter. Once again, please do take your time. Remember good router safety practices. And with the cutter centered up, you should have results like that. All right, so now it's time to go back to the actual bezel itself. And you're gonna have to work on this for a while, but if you take your time, you'll get decent results. Now, these things are a little flimsy. You'll see that some of the tabs have broke off. I jumped over to start mounting some of the controls, and uh, when it came to the joysticks, I wanted to pre-drill all the holes and then remove those uh, because when you pre-drill into the MDF, it's going to cause a little bump on the bottom. So I wanted to just sand that nice and smooth before we gave the back of it a coat of paint and decided to let this hang up and dry. And once it does, we'll come back to it. All right, nice and dry. You'll notice that I painted black the top edges in a minute. That's going to be really important as we move forward. So you take your overlay and center it up as best you can and then use a little bit of uh, masking tape. That's going to help you when you lay out your graphic. Now unfortunately you're not going to be able to just go out and buy this. This is something that I designed specifically uh, for this project. And uh, submitted this to Game On Graphics who once again came through like champs and, uh, and got me a great uh, control panel overlay. Nice thick vinyl. Lay down pretty nice. Um, I use a little bit of heat in some areas. And you just take your time and carefully cut out these holes using the hole itself as sort of the guide to the blade. And then, uh, you know, like I said, if you take your time, don't get too aggressive, you'll have good results like this. All right, now it's tea molding time. Lime green, of course, to match the cabinet. Uh, when you come to these corners, this is the way I do it. I, I do a center cut straight up, and then I V outward. And that really just allows you to, it just gonna let you really make this this bend uh, by taking out some of that material in that T molding you create this big notch now that's half the notch there you're gonna pull your T molding out and continue that mimic the same thing on the other side so you're gonna have like a big V shape or or pizza ah, pizza Ninja Turtles that's appropriate uh, pizza shaped uh, or wedge shaped uh, piece you're gonna cut out and then as you bend that around they won't make contact inside the wood and it's going to give you really good results. Rubber mallet to tap these in, not a regular hammer. And there you go. Um, man, this looks good. Looks really good. I'm excited to get it finished up. So let's flip it over and let's begin dropping in the bezels. Now these bezels, one of them, uh, one of the little tabs broke. So what I'm going to have to do is uh, use a little uh, CA glue. Basically, it's just a combination of super glue and then a spray-on activator that instantly cures it. Keeps that in place. All right, now with the assembly 
for the on off assembly. Screwed down, you can see that the volume controls work. The on off button works great. Uh, and with all the other buttons in place, now it's time to mount the encoder. And this is where I run into my first problem. For those of you with a keen eye, you'll see that I actually mounted the, uh, the plastic on off assembly upside down. And this is, uh, you know, past Fox realizing <laughs> he screwed up. Yeah, no, you keep flipping it, Fox, it's not going to work. So, of course, let's get back in here, unscrew this, flip it around, and then we can continue on with the assembly. It's definitely important to make sure you have this correct, so don't be a dummy like me. Get it right the first time. Now, if you're dealing with controls or buttons that you bought from someone else online, you're not going to have every screw you need. To screw down the encoder board, these are the screws that I used. Well, number four by three-eighths long. Now with the encoder board secured, now we can actually go through the tedious task of plugging in all of our inputs, making sure that one is going to be, in this case, Leonardo, and uh, player two is actually going to be player four or Raphael. Now once you get done, because these controls are for a four-player cabinet, you're going to have a little bit of excess wiring. But just take your time. With a little bit of effort, you can go from this to this. Not bad, right? And now to really clean up the underside, we're going to go with a stock RK1 up bottom control panel cover. I picked this up from Uplay.com. A link for their website will be in the description below. Now some of the fasteners you're going to use are going to have shiny zinc plated heads uh, like these screws here to hold down that cover. I wanted those to be black, so instead of trying to find a black screw, I just take these and push them in some cardboard and then hit them with some paint, let them dry. All right, back over on the control panel, you can see my screws. Line everything up as best you can. I did pre-drill these holes, but once you do that, the screws will go in nice, and uh, all the results speak for themselves. Obviously, this is made for that first-gen uh, encoder, but the third-gen works just fine. Always, before you put your bat tops on, hit the uh, threads with a little bit of Loctite. A little bit of insurance goes a long way. And here's your first look at the control panel. Uh, I went with the darker blue buttons from the Street Fighter cabinet, which is why they don't really match that bat top. Uh, and nothing is perfect, as in life. My graphic came up just a little bit short on the right side. You can see it here on the right side. It's definitely good to paint your MDF before you apply graphics for this very reason. All right, let's get the four-player control panel out of the way and install our brand new custom fabricated two-player. Remember to take out your J panel and fabricate a new one, or in my case, I'm just gonna use one or borrow one from one of my other cabinets. Once that piece is in place, Bolt down your control panel, turn it on, and cross your fingers. Okay, I'm going through my I.O. check. Everything looks great as far as two-player goes. Buttons work. Everything does what it's supposed to. Up, down, left, and right for two-player. But unfortunately, I made a little bit of a mistake here, and I've got my up, down, left, and right backwards on the first player. Not good. So we have to take it all apart again. Make the swap from here to there. Put all the covers back on, plug this thing back in, bolt it back down, and let's enjoy all of our hard work. It does look great, but it's not perfect. Unfortunately, the volume uh, is the opposite of how it appears on the screen. I can take this all apart and move that switch around, but I can live with it for now. But with that being said, one thing that really is an improvement is the how to play decal on the control panel. I think it's much more proportioned in my redesign. Um, with the addition of the Ninja Turtles uh, logo onto the side, it, uh, it just balances out the control panel, at least in my opinion. But you've heard what I think. What do you think? Is this completely unnecessary? I think if you're concerned about space, it's definitely a great option. And of course, you have the added benefit of this being a 100% plug-and-play mod. If you ever want to go back to stock, you can definitely do so. The cabinet is not modified in any permanent way. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Y'all have a blessed day, and I will see you next time.